so good afternoon everyone so here i am with the continuation of my class that i had done i had completed my discussion in the last class so here i am with my 25th class in english and uh, as you all know that we have been discussing a play a one act play by seraphin brothers seraphin and alvarez quintero isn't it so it is titled as a sunny morning and uh, you also remember that like, like you know there are only four characters that appear in this play and uh, you will have to know each and every uh, detail about those characters what do they do why do they come and all those stuff and uh, in order to recapitulate what i had done in my last class i'll just give you three words and you should be in a position to understand and correlate what exactly they have we done the first word is valencia then you have marisela then you have laurente it is also called as laura laurente okay so if you look at these three words that have been given here so you will you are you should be in a position to understand or recall or try to recapitulate what exactly we had discussed in the last class okay now to bring you from the beginning of the play you all know very well that there are only four characters who appear in the play and uh, there are two old man and a woman by name don alora on the other hand you have don gonzalo right so they have a habit of coming to a park every day and they come there and they sit where don alora always comes and she you know uh, tries to feed the pigeons or the birds she always carries bread crumbs along with her and she comes with her maid by name petra and then you have on the other hand don gonzalo who comes to the park to read specifically to read books at his old age both of them are 70 70 years old isn't it but on the other hand dolora donalora is trying to hide her identity which i have already discussed <coughs> then they do come there they start uh, talking about different things uh, she starts feeding feeding the pigeons on the other hand the man the old man is very much surprised because he did not find any place to sit in the park all the bench benches in the park were occupied then later on we see that finally without having any choice or without having any further choice Uh, don gonzalo had to come and sit on the same bench where don alora was sitting so there are kind of arguments and misunderstandings miscommunications do happen between these two characters which you should take it uh, take the evidence from the text reading it thoroughly all right and uh, one thing that we notice here is that like you know <clears throat> both these characters were not willing to look at each other or talk to each other or something but there was one thing that brought a peace between them and that was nothing but the snuff exchange scene okay in that particular snuff exchange scene we need to understand that there were kinds of similarities or coincidences between these two characters the first thing is that before they could start doing any work whether reading or maybe any other work the first thing is that when they take this something that is called as you know uh, snuff when they take this snuff both characters head clears off number 1 and both of them will sneeze for three times continuously right and then it gives them a kind of a relaxation so these are the some of the similarities or the coincidences that we can find between both of these characters and then we also have discussed about like you know how don gonzalo tells laura that he has been to america to meet the campomar zorilla isn't it so there are he takes some names of the poets of the spanish language and uh, when they take this uh, snuff when they exchange the snuff between each other this snuff becomes or this particular scene becomes as a matter of fact in terms of bringing peace between these two characters okay as the story progresses what we see here is that 
with the in terms of the discussions why because now don alara and don gonzalo both of them are willing they are at least willing to look at each other and start talking to each other so as the story progresses okay there are kinds of the conversations that are happening between these characters in which i would like to bring it to your notice about these three different words that we have here and you should be in a position to identify or relate it to the story about what do these words mean to them the first word is valencia so valencia is a name of a city where don gonzalo was living he says to don don alora that he is a native of this particular place called valencia number 1 right then as the conversation progresses here don alora tells to gonzalo that marisela was a name of a what it's a name of a villa where don alora was living okay so it was between the orange and lemon orchards next to the sea not very far from valencia there was a villa by name marisela where laura was living then as dona laura says that she was living in marisela don gonzalo immediately recalls or he goes back to his memory and says that oh if you say that marisela marisela it's a known place for me even i have been there for several times or something and then he tells to don alora that he has seen the most beautiful woman who was living on earth in spite of he has seen so many different women in his life that particular woman who was living in marisela has to, uh, is something which is like you know uh, he is very much impressed by the way this lady was who was living in marisela am i clear with these two words now valencia a name of a city where don gonzalo was living okay when he says that valencia was also known to laura also then uh, when laura listens to valencia t- she takes a name of marisela okay when marisela was brought into the discussion here in the play what we come to know here is that when don gonzalo was saying that marisela there lived a very beautiful woman and let me uh, try to recollect what was her name and then he says and says and says and finally he says that it was laura laurente i think this is the place where we had stopped in my last class so please remember these three names because this will definitely give you a connotation to the story that you will have to understand it in such a way that valencia marisela laura laurente will be connected in the story in order to progress further to the play right so now let us come back to the text here and see what further happens in the course of the play okay now page number 42 42 on your textbook don gonzalo telling this dialogue about what is I, i had written there on the board that is he was telling to her about let me remember what was her name of the most beautiful woman that i've seen on earth was yes very familiar if my memory serves me right for we forget as we grow old there lived in that villa in that villa marisela in that villa the most beautiful woman i have ever seen and i assure you that i have seen many let me see what was her name laura 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 laurente he somehow was able to recollect and remember the name of the most beautiful lady that he has ever seen and her name was laurente look at the response of dona laura she is startled startled she is amazed she is surprised she is surprised laura laurente then he says yes they look at each other intently both of them look at each other with having some kind of a intention now why do you think so that both of them are looking intently let us find out what happens then uh, immediately L- laura recovering to herself nothing you reminded me of my best friend 
she wanted to say something but she couldn't do so rather she said that nothing happened you just reminded me of one of my friends she says how strange it is strange she was called the silver maiden okay now you should understand here this particular word or a phrase that is used by laura law according to laura there was a lady or there was a friend of her who was living in marisela and she was called as the the silver maiden okay she was called as the silver maiden then gonzalo says precisely the silver maiden by that name she was known in that locality exactly what you're saying is absolutely true the lady who was so beautiful who was living in that villa she was more of called as or she was known to the people rather by her name no but she was known to the people by this title called the silver maiden by that name she was known in that locality i seem to see her as if she were before me now so he just starts telling to her like you know you are there right in front of me but what i feel in my imagination is that i am looking at the same silver maiden as if she is standing right in front of me at the window with the red roses do you remember that window again he goes back to the past and tells her that she is standing as if i'm i'm imagining as if i'm just standing in front of the silver maiden and she was the one who always used to hold a bouquet of roses and she always used to stand nearby a window in the villa do you remember so he asks her whether she remembers it then what is the response of laura laura says that yes i remember it was the window of her room yeah she says that yes i do remember that window and that window was belonging to her own room where she was living so what is the hint it is trying to give you when laura says that yes i remember that window and the window was belonging to her own room that she was living in guess guess in your mind what's going to happen then gonzalo says she spent many hours standing near the window i mean in my day that is in my day in my opinion she used to spend a lot more many hours of her life standing near the window then sighing she sighed and in mine too probably as yes, even in my day too i was of the opinion that she used to stand near the window waiting for someone spending hours together then gonzalo says she was ideal who oh, the silver maiden the silver maiden was very ideal she was fair as jelly i'm sorry lily she was very fair as a lily flower that her face can be compared to with jet black hair and black eyes with an uncommonly sweet expression now that is the description of the silver maiden that don gonzalo used to see whenever he used to go to that villa or whenever he was near the villa she was with a very sweet expression she seemed to cast radiance wherever she was radiance glow okay her face was something which was a glowing point for any one of us even if we just look at her from a far off distance her figure was very beautiful and perfect what forms of sovereign beauty more god models in human clay she was just like a dream now he in this dialogue gonzalo describes the beauty of the silver maiden in terms of personifications then donna laura is seen in this speech talking to herself a side is given in the brackets you can see that and now she is talking to herself and let us see whom is she talking or what is she talking to herself if you know but knew that dream was now by your side you would realize what dreams come to so till this she is speaking to herself so what does she say she said if you but knew that dream was whatever the dream that you said about her describing the beauty of the silver maiden it was none other than me who is standing just in front of you and you would realize what dreams come to then she says she was very unfortunate and had a sad love affair okay now 
Laura is telling to Gonzalo that the lady silver maiden was very unfortunate in terms of her fate. Why? Because she ended up with a very sad loving story or that is a very sad love affair. Gonzalo also says, yes, very sad. Yeah, I know that she ended up with a very sad love affair. Both of them look at each other still and both of them are, you know, surprised to look at each other. Did you hear of it? Yes, the ways of the providence are strange, aside Gonzalo. The ways of providence, that is whatever is happening right now in front of us or both, between both of us are very strange. And now Laura is saying that she has identified that it was none other than the Gonzalo himself. That is she comes to know and she talks to herself and says Gonzalo. Then Gonzalo says, the gallant lover in the same affair. So here what Gonzalo says is that he tells a name that is a gallant lover, gallant, mighty, strong. The gallant lover in the same affair. Yes, I do also remember that his name or we used to call him by the name the gallant lover. Ah, the duel. Okay, now you will have to understand these rewards here because, because they are very much related to the story that you need to understand that is the first word is the silver maiden the second one is the gallant lover okay and then the third one is Dual. Okay. Now these three words will tell you about whatever is being we, we are being going to discuss or whatever we are being discussing now and probably you will have to relate and understand what exactly do they mean. Now according to our reading or according to what we need to understand here is that the silver maiden is nothing but the lady who was living in the Marisela. Okay. The gallant lover is nothing but who was loving this lady who had a very sad love affair or something and then duel what do you mean by duel a duel is nothing but a fight between two warriors that is called as duel okay now he says that ah the duel laura remembers something more about the love affair and she says the duel gonzalo also says precisely exactly yes the duel the gallant lover was my cousin of whom i was very fond so what you need to understand here is that Gonzalo knows that Laura is who is Laura. On the other hand, Laura also knows that who is Gonzalo. But both of them are trying to hide their real identity to each of them. Being readers, we can guess or we can understand that it is none other than those two people only. But still, these two characters in the action of the play still try to hide their identity one never want to say about the true identity to the to the other character is what you need to understand okay now when we are talking about some duel here precisely the duel the gallant lover was my cousin so he says that i am from valencia but the gallant lover who had a very sad love affair was none other than my cousin to whom i was very fond so he was very close cousin of mine and i'm i feel always a pity about him or i feel always very sad for him because his love ended up in a sad note okay getting all of you all right now look at the explanation or look at the dialogues spoken or being told by Laura. Oh yes, a cousin. My friend told me in one of her letters the story of that affair which was truly romantic. He, your cousin, passed on on the horseback every morning down the rose path under her window and tossed up to her balcony a bouquet of flowers which she caught. Now she gives further explanation about what they are discussing about these three words here. Okay, now Laura says that, oh, was he your cousin? That is, she accepts the fact saying that he was your cousin. The gallant man is lover is nothing but the cousin. So she accepts it and she says that, my friend, that is, 
silver maiden isn't it the silver maiden had told about their love affair in one of the letters she had written to me which was very romantic and what she further used to tell was which was truly romantic he your cousin that is the gallant lover always used to cross the path where this lady was living where was she living she was living in marisela in that villa so the gallant lover every day used to pass on on the same path that is on the road where the silver maiden was standing on the window and he used to toss nothing but he used to throw a bouquet of roses or flowers a bouquet of flowers which every day she used to catch are you getting now what laura says here is that she has a letter written by her friend and her friend has told about the gallant lover that this gallant lover was every day passing in front of the villa and he used to go to the rose path there and he used to always toss up that is he always every day used to throw a bouquet of flowers which silver maiden was catching it from her window getting okay for that look at the reply of gonzalo gonzalo says and later in the afternoon the gallant horseman that is the gallant lover would written by the same path so he further says about what was the action that was happening so when he used to go on one side he used to toss the bouquet of flowers and when he used to come back on the same path on the horse back that is on the horseman would written of the same path uh, and catch the bouquet of flowers she would toss to him am i right so look at the way how he is talking like you know uh, gonzalo so he is just reconfirming it by saying a question tag there isn't it so what is he saying that so when he used to return in the afternoon from the same path he used to come on the horseback on the same line or on the same road where he was given or he was given a bouquet of flowers in turn by the silver maiden who was standing in near her window and he used to take it am i right that was the question tag that he asks what is the response of laura laura says yes they wanted to marry her to a merchant whom she would not have yes but in every love story sorry in every in uh, between every lovers obviously there will be one thing that will be acting as the family isn't it in a similar way yes they wanted to marry her that is the family members of the silver maiden wanted her to marry to a merchant whom silver maiden did not like getting that is what exactly it was told there then gonzalo says and one night when my cousin waited under her window to hear her sing this other person presented himself unexpectedly so what we need to understand here at this part of the story is that when both these characters laura and gonzalo are discussing about their past they are actually telling about themselves okay on the other hand being readers we can identify we can guess or we can make a wild guess saying that it was them but on the other hand dona laura nor gonzalo want to reveal their identity that both of them have identified each other with respect to their youthful days or memories or whatsoever okay so in the last line when laura says that silver maiden was forced or she was uh, forced by her family members to get married to a merchant but on the other hand she was in love with the gallant lover one who used to come every day to meet her so in a similar way when he had one day when this gallant lover had come to meet the silver maiden in her villa only because he wanted to listen to her songs or something he was unexpectedly caught by the same merchant okay she was caught i mean he was caught by the merchant 
who was supposed to marry silver maiden am i clear so i shall stop here and we shall continue it in the next class of mine until then just see read it once again or rewatch or once again watch the video or try to read the text only it will give you the glimpse of understanding the text in a better way so in this session what you need to understand is that you should be in a position to understand these three names silver maiden where did it come what is the importance of this lady and then the gallant lover and the duel duel as i have already told you that duel is nothing but a fight between two warriors for any specific cause or something i'm yet to come to give you the uh, you know uh, details about the duel but i think so far in my discussion it is very clear like it is a silver who is silver maiden and who is this gallant lover he is or something okay so i shall stop here and i shall continue in the next class of mine and i possibly positively presume the fact that you have been watching the videos and taking down wherever you want some keywords or any phrases during the explanation and trying to connect it after watching the video connect it with whatever you have written reading the text so this will give you an very clear idea on to uh, in terms of understanding what the text is all about all right so thank you and i shall meet you in the next class of mine thank you very much